Hey, this is Lance Melanchain. I want to talk about a few general context engineering principles and how they show up in various popular agents like Manus, like Cloud Code, and also in our recently released Deep Agents package and CLI. So first, agent can be simply thought of as an LLM calling tools in a loop. An LLM kind of makes a tool call. The tool is executed. Observation from a tool goes back to the LLM. And this continues until some termination condition. Now, the length of tasks that AI agents can perform is getting longer. A nice result from Meter shows that the task length is doubling around every seven months. Now, the challenge with this is that as agents take on longer tasks, you accumulate more tool results. For example, Manus mentioned that the average Manus task is over 50 tool calls. Likewise, Anthropic has mentioned that production agents can often be hundreds of turns. The problem is that as you populate the context window with results from all these different tool calls, you're passing all those prior tool results back through the model at every turn. And so the cost and latency associated with running your agent can really blow up. And not only that, performance can degrade. So Chrome has a nice report on context rot that discusses how performance degrades with respect to context length. And so what we've seen is that agents are increasingly being designed with a few different principles to help address this. Of course, agents have a few common primitives, a model, prompting, tools, and often hooks. Take Claude Code as an example, it's using Claude series models. The system prompt is actually available. You can look at it at this link here. I'll make sure that this document is in the video description. It has around a dozen native tools, and it does allow for hooks, which are basically scripts that can be programmatically run at different points in this agent lifecycle, for example, before each tool call or after each tool call. Now, our Deep Agents package and our Deep Agents CLI is similarly set up with these primitives. The package allows for any model provider. The CLI uses OpenAI Anthropic currently. You can see the prompts. It's all open source. It's using eight native tools and 11 native tools for the package and the CLI. I'll show those later in detail. And we also allow for hooks at various points in the agent lifecycle. Now, these primitives that kind of make up what we call an agent harness in mind, what are the common techniques that we see across different agents for managing the problem of context rot and of accumulating tokens from many turns of tool calls? Well, context engineering is kind of the broad turn that captures many of these principles. Karpathy outlines it very nicely here. It's the delicate art and science of filling the context with just the right information for the next step, which is very applicable to agents. You're trying to steer the agent to make the right next tool call along its trajectory of actions. And the three common principles I like to distill are offload, reduce, and isolate. So offloading is moving context from the LM context window to something external, like a file system or it can be selectively retrieved later as needed. Reducing is just simply reducing the size of the context past the LM at each turn, and there can be a bunch of different techniques to do that. And finally, isolating context. So using separate context windows or separate subagents for individual tasks. And I share some references here. I talked about this on Latent Space podcast. I had a webinar with Manus where we talked through these principles and how Manus uses them. And I'm going to review them here and also talk about how deep agents Package and CLI employs these ideas. So first, offloading context. A trend that we've seen repeatedly is that giving agents access to a file system is very useful. It lets the agents save and recall information during long-running tasks. And this is pretty intuitive. I share a link here from Anthropic's multi-agent researcher, where they basically have the researcher write a plan, write it to a file, go do a bunch of work, and then they just retrieve that plan after a bunch of sub-agents did work, make sure that everything's been addressed. So you can just write to a file and read it back into context when you need to kind of reinforce the plan that was laid out. And this is very useful to ensure that you actually don't forget specific steps in the plan. By externalizing it to file, reading it back into context, you ensure that it's persisted and that the agent can be more easily steered since you're selectively pulling it back into the context window as needed to help keep the agent on track. Now, another interesting thing about the file system is Oftentimes, it's persistent across different agent invocations. For example, if you're running your agent locally on your laptop with Claude Code, Claude Code can always reference this Claude MD file, which can live at various levels. It can live at the project level, and also there's a global Claude MD. This Claude MD can store information that you want to persist across all your different interactions with Claude Code, as an example. 
So Manus uses these same ideas. Of course, with Manus, it runs remotely. So it uses a sandbox environment, which contains a file system and gives the agent access to a computer. And it supports user memory. Now, the Deep Agents package allows for different backends. So you can use the LangGraph state object, which is just in memory, or you can use a, a file system backend, for example, your local machine. And the Deep Agents CLI is a lot like Claude Code running on your laptop, where it will just use your local file system as a backend. The Deep Agent CLI also support for memory using a memories directory as well as an agent.md file. The principle here we've seen repeatedly is that giving agents the ability to offload context to a file system has a lot of benefits. You can persist information during long-running trajectories, and you can persist information and you can persist context across different invocations of the agent in things like a CloudMD file or an agentMD file, or in the case of Deep Agent CLI, a memories directory. Now, another benefit of the file system is that you can actually offload actions from tools to just scripts. Now, what do I mean by this? We want agents to perform actions. Let's say we want to give an agent 10 different actions. Often, you can think about that as, OK, for every action, I'm going to define a unique tool. I'll bind all those tools to the agent. So I have an agent with 10 different tools. Now, the LLM in that agent has to determine when to use each of those 10 tools. And you also have to load all those tool instructions into the system prompt. So there's two problems there. One is confusion in terms of what tool to use. And two, you're also bloating your instructions with a bunch of tool descriptions. Now look, with three or four or even 10 tools, it's not a big issue. But if we talk about hundreds of tools, this can be significant tokens just spent on all the tool descriptions. So one principle, and in the webinar with Manus, we cover this in depth, is actually keeping the function calling layer very lightweight. So give the agent only a few functions to call, but make sure there are very general atomic functions that can do lots of things. And push a lot of the actions out to something like scripts in a file system. So for example, Manus gives the agent like a bash tool and file system manipulation tools. And with those two things, it can just search a directory of scripts using various tools to navigate the file system and execute any one using the bash tool. So with like three or four simple tools for file manipulation as well as code execution, it can perform a very large number of actions as specified by the scripts that you give it. And so that's a way to expand the action space of the agent significantly while only giving it access to a small number of tools. And this principle we see repeatedly, if you look at Claude Code, Boris Cherney and Kat Wu, the engineering and product leads of Claude Code were recently on a great podcast. I have the link here where they mentioned that Cloud Code is only using around a dozen tools. And when you're using it, you can kind of see it uses glob grep, it uses bash, it uses fetch to grab URLs, but it's not using that many tools. It's only about a dozen. Manus is using less than 20 tools. With Deep Agents, we actually only have eight native tools. And with the Deep Agent CLI, we have 11 native tools. I'll show those below. Now, a related idea is progressive disclosure of actions. Anthropic talks about this specifically in its recent release of skills. And this is an interesting quote from a nice blog post that I link here. Cloud skills are very simply a skills folder which a bunch of, with a bunch of subfolders, each of which is a specific skill. And each subfolder just has this skill MD file, a markdown file, with a header. The header just explains in very brief language what that skill does. The header is the only thing that's loaded into Cloud code initially. And you can see in this diagram, that's exactly what they show here. So there's a brief snippet about each skill available. Now, in the case of Claude skills, if Claude wants to use any given skill, it just then can selectively read the full skill.md file. So again, just the header is read into the system prompt by default. If Claude wants to actually execute a skill, it'll read that full skill.md file. Now, that skill.md file can reference any other files in that same skill directory. So it could contain scripts. It could contain other files that contain more context. And so what's really nice is Claude, with only its bash tool as an example, can just go ahead and read the full skill.md file. And then if needed, can execute any other scripts in that same skill directory or read any other files in. So it's just a nice way of progressively disclosing actions to Claude without loading all that into the system prompt ahead of time, and importantly, without binding all those different capabilities 
or skills as tools. Remember, you're only using, for example, in the simplest case, the bash tool to read the skillmd file and then to execute any scripts in that skill folder or read any other files in that folder as well. So I think about this as a very simple way to give agents access to different actions in a way that saves tokens because they're progressively disclosed only if, in this case, Claude needs the skill. And it's only using simple built-in tools, like the bash tool and maybe some file manipulation tools. So Manus is using a very similar principle. The Manus agent has access to a large number of different scripts, and it can discover those scripts using its native file search as well as bash tools. Now, we don't yet have this notion of skills in the deep agent CLI, but I'm actually working on adding that right now because I think it's a very nice way to give an agent access to lots of actions without bloating its context window with instructions and without having to bind additional tools. Now, I do just want to briefly make it even more crisp what specific tools are in the deep agents package just to highlight this point that often we're seeing agents ship with small numbers of general atomic tools. So Deep Agents Package only has basic tools for file manipulation, a task tool for creating subtasks with subagents, and a to-dos tool to generate to-dos. The CLI extends this slightly with some search tools and a bash tool. Now let's talk about reducing context. There's three interesting ideas here, compaction, summarization, and filtering. So first I'll talk a little bit about what Manus does. So Manus uses this idea of compaction. So this on the left is showing a trajectory of tool calls and tool results. And of course, tool results can be quite token heavy. Now what they do is they just compact old tool results by saving their full result to a file and just referencing that file in the message history. Now they only do this with what you might call stale tool results that have already been acted on. But it's a very nice way to reduce tokens in the message history. And so this is kind of a neat diagram that they showed. Imagine your agent's running is performing many turns. So after some number of turns, you get very close to the context window of the LLM. And that's when they apply this compaction. So they take all the historical tool results, they're all bloating that message history, and they compact them all down, offload them to the file system. And that brings down the overall context utilization significantly. The agent keeps running. And this progressively starts to saturate. And then they apply summarization. So summarization looks at the entire message history which includes the full tool result messages and summarizes it all down to much more compact distilled summary, which then the agent can use and you can see goes forward. One interesting point is that this compaction step is actually reversible because you can always go back and look at the raw tool results, which are saved to these files. That's another benefit using the file system. Summarization though is not. So that is a step that needs to be carefully thought through. Because when you do summarization, you necessarily lose information. Now, you see these ideas employed by Anthropic as well. So Anthropic recently shipped context editing, which just prunes the message history of old two results in a configurable manner. And Claude Code applies summarization when you hit around 95% of the context window. Now, the Deep Agents package applies summarization with summarization middleware. And so that automatically kicks off after some threshold 170,000 tokens, and it preserves some number of messages. Of course, it's all open source and configurable. Now, one of the other things employed in the Deep Agents package and CLI is that file system middleware will actually filter large tool results, which is a nice way to prevent excessively large tool results from being passed directly to the LLM. Now, finally, let's talk about context isolation. This is a technique that we've seen employed repeatedly, and this is a pretty simple idea. Many tasks performed by an agent can be assigned to a subagent. That subagent has its own context window. And so it can start fresh in a particular task, particularly if that task is nicely self-contained, execute that task, and just return the output back to the parent agent. And that's this first pattern shown here, and this was discussed by Manus as well, this communication pattern. So you have a parent or main agent. It wants to spawn a subagent to do some task. It passes some instructions to that subagent. That subagent churns along and passes that result back to the main agent. That's a very common pattern. Now, there is some nuance here. Sometimes you want to actually share more context with that subagent. And actually, Manus allows for sharing the full message history that the parent has with the subagent. Similarly, with deep agents, similarly with a deep agent CLI, 
the subagent actually has access to the same file system as the parent. So there is some shared context between them. So just to summarize, agent harnesses typically employ at least three principles for managing context. Offloading, reducing, and isolating. So some of the most common ideas in context offloading include using the file system. We see that across the board, Cloud Code, Manus, and the Deep Agent CLI all support use of the file system. Enabling user memories. This is intuitively the ability to remember information across agent invocations. Cloud enables it with Cloud MD. Deep Agent CLI has a memories folder as a memories directory as well as agents MD. Manus also supports cross-session memory. Use minimal tools. This can significantly save tokens in terms of tool descriptions and minimize the number of the decisions that the agent has to make across different tools. Cloud Code uses only around a dozen tools. Manus is less than 20. Deep Agent CLI is 11. Give the agent a computer, i.e. a bash tool. All these agent harnesses do that. Progressive disclosure of actions. So Cloud Code does this with skills. Manus does this by basically giving the agent access to a directory with a whole bunch of different scripts and letting it peruse that directory on an as-needed basis using its existing file system and bash tools. Skills for Deep Agent CLI are a work in progress. Now, this idea of compaction, basically pruning old tool messages, Manus for sure does it. The Cloud SDK does support it in this idea of context editing, they call it. I assume it's being done in Cloud Code, but I'm not positive. So I actually should flag, I should probably flag this as yellow because I'm not entirely sure, but I imagine it is being done. We know for sure that the Cloud Code does summarization once you hit around 95% of the context window. Manus does this, Deep Agent CLI does this. And all three support subagents for isolating different tasks to unique context windows. Now the Deep Agent CLI is open source, contributions are welcome, and it's fun to try to employ the, these ideas in open source harness that can be used with many different models. So hopefully this is a useful overview of how these principles operate across different popular agent harnesses and how they're being used in the Deep Agent CLI. And any questions or contributions are very welcome. Thanks.